All right, in this video, we look at a summary of the different ideas from section 5.1, uh, and we'll look at specifically the function 16 minus x squared on the interval 0 to 4. So what we are discussing in this question is the definite integral from 0 to 4 of 16 minus x squared dx. Because the function is always positive on the interval 0 to 4, we know that what we're talking about in this problem is the area under the function 16 minus x squared on the interval i going from 0 to 4. And we know at this point that we can consider the left endpoint or the right endpoint problem for the Riemann sum, which is the process by which we add rectangles to compute the approximate area under the curve. Right, and we also are familiar with the idea that there is a underestimate SN or a capital SN for an overestimate for the area. And the left or right, depending on the nature of the function, could lead to an underestimate for the area or an overestimate, depending on the function itself. So what we're seeing in this problem over here on the left is the function 16 minus x squared. We're looking at it on the interval from 0 to 4. And we've got the number of rectangles in this problem to be 4. So we're looking at a delta x is equal to 1, and we are looking at the left endpoint problem over here on the left. Okay, and what we are seeing, what we're seeing here is that the rectangles are um, above the graph of the function in blue, so we have an overestimate. So in this case, left leads to an overestimate because of the function's decreasing nature. Okay, now if we switch to a right endpoint problem, the estimate would be an underestimate, and we'll look at that in a second. But what we can <clears throat> see in this problem is that the, the general question that we have been building up to over the past couple of videos is this idea that as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, when you look at an underestimate or you look at a limit as n goes to infinity of an overestimate, right? that both of these limits will go to the exact area under the curve. And that exact area is what we're denoting by this notation called the definite integral. So here we're going to see this process work as the number of rectangles gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. We can see that the area of those rectangles is an overestimate. It's bigger than the actual area. We'll have to discuss how we get the actual exact area in a, in a little bit, but we can see here that as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we can see, barely see the difference. We can barely see these rectangles peeking over the top, but still we can see that the area is an overestimate of the actual answer. And that's because we are using left endpoints and the function is decreasing. If we were to switch to right endpoints, okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, and we need to be on the interval from 0 to 4. And let's take four rectangles, okay. What we are seeing here is the fact that we've got delta x again equal to 1 when n is equal to 4. And we can only see three rectangles because we evaluated the function at this right endpoint 4, which was a height of 0. So a, there is a rectangle here. It's just of height 0. And so we're seeing in this problem that the right endpoint problem leads to an underestimate. Okay. And again, though, that as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, as we get more and more rectangles, we can see that our estimated area is getting bigger and bigger. But no matter, see what happens, where this number is below the actual area. So we have an underestimate. 
but as the number of rectangles goes to infinity, this number should be getting closer and closer to the exact answer. Okay, so this uh, hopefully demonstration has led us to the um, understanding that when we see this notation, the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx, right, that there is a limit involved in this problem, right? And the limit will be a limit of the sum of rectangles, right? And then we'll evaluate the function at a plus i delta x multiplied by delta x. And you can do the left endpoint problem. The left endpoint problem, if you start at 0 and go to n minus 1, this is the left endpoint problem. Okay. And the right endpoint problem will be i going from 1 to n. That would be the right endpoint problem. Okay, so we can bring in Desmos now to kind of get a better idea of where this actual or exact area is going to come into play. Okay, so let's bring in Desmos now. We have the function 16 minus x squared. Okay, and we know that uh, we know the general form for the Riemann sum. So let's bring up our functions. And we know that we want i to go from, say, 1 to the number of rectangles in. We want the function. Our left endpoint is a, which is 0 in this case, plus i multiplied by delta x. And delta x is the width of the interval 4 divided by the number of rectangles. And then we multiply again by 4 divided by n, which is the width of the rectangles. Okay, now we can see that we've gone from 1 to n, so this was our right endpoint problem. And if we add a slider for the number of rectangles, let's let the number of rectangles go from 4 to say, you know, 1,000, or how about 500? Okay. All right, so when n is equal to 4, we'll get an area of 34, which will be an. Um, the right endpoint problem was an underestimate. If we repeat this process with the sigma notation, and let's do a left endpoint problem now, which should be an overestimate, we'll go from 0 to the number of rectangles minus 1. The function evaluated at 0 plus i times delta x is 4 divided by n. 4 divided by n. And then we need to multiply by the width of the rectangle again, which is 4 divided by n. All right. Now we can see that that answer is 50 with only 4 rectangles. But as the number of rectangles gets bigger and bigger, we can see that these numbers right, are getting closer and closer to 42-something. And if we get big enough and big enough and big enough and big enough, 42.6, 42.73. So we think that the answer is somewhere somewhere in the, the exact answer. We're not quite sure, but it's somewhere somewhere in the ballpark of 42.6 uh, between 42.7, something like this. Okay? Now, we know that the exact answer is 42.6667, and we need to figure out how to do that now. Okay, so let's go to another page. Okay, and we know that we're looking at the function f of x is 16 minus x squared. We're on the interval going from 0 to 4, right? And our t main technique uh, for letting the number of rectangles going to infinity was our sigma notation key formulas. Okay. Two of those key formulas were the summation from i going from 1 to n of 1, which was n. There was also the summation from i going from 1 to n of i, 
which is n times n plus 1 over 2. And there's also a new one, right? The summation from i going from 1 to n of i squared. And the numbers um, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared up to n squared all the way up to n squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. This is a formula that has taken some time to develop, but here it is, and let's see if we can use it. Okay. Now, if we do the right endpoint problem, right endpoint problem, we know that we're going to have the summation from i going from 1 to n of the function at 0 plus i times delta x, which was 4 over n, times 4 over n. Okay. We can write this a little bit shorter, getting rid of the n is equal to 0. I'm sorry, this is 0 right here, and we can have the function at 4i over n, okay, times 4 over n. But because our function was 16 minus x squared, we know that this function evaluated at 4i over n is going to be 16 minus 4i over n squared multiplied by 4 over n. Okay, now we have a little bit of algebra on our hands. We'll do the summation from i going from 1 to n. We can distribute the 4 over n. And that would be 16 times 4 is 64 over n minus um, 16, which is 4 squared, 64 over n cubed times i squared. Okay. And now we know that, that because of the summation, we can split this into two different sums, and we'll get 64 over n minus the summation i going from 1 to n of 64 over n cubed i squared. Now, the 64 over n is a constant because it's only i that is changing. Okay, so let me make this Okay, so the 64 over n can come out in front. We have the summation from i going from 1 to n of 1 minus the 64 over n cubed gets factored out. And we have only i going from 1 to n of i squared. And now here we get to use our key formulas. Okay, the key formula for this was n that the summation from i going from 1 to n of 1, there are n ones added together, which is n. And then if we add the numbers i squared up from 1 to n, we'll get n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay. Which leads us to 64 over n times n is 64 minus 64 over n cubed n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Okay. okay. Move this out of the way. All right. So the next thing to do would be to do a little bit of algebra on uh, this uh, notebook. Let me just do some algebra real quick. So we can take the n times n plus 1 times 2 times n plus 1 and expand that out. So there's this term. And if you expand it, you can do this by hand. I just want to okay, make sure that I don't mess that up in live form. So this is 2n cubed plus 3n squared plus n. Okay. And then because there's a 64 and a 6, to 64 go into 6, 32 over 3. So we'll just leave that as 64 over 6. And then 2n cubed. And then there is an n cubed term left here. 
Okay, so what we can conclude is that we will have 64 minus 64 over 6. Okay. And then when you look at these terms right here and divide them out, you'll get 2 plus 3 over n plus 1 over n squared. Okay. And this formula right here is what we call, uh, when we did the right endpoint problem with this decreasing function, this was little s sub n. It was an underestimate. This is little s. Okay. And then as n goes to infinity, the limit as n goes to infinity of little s, we can see that because these n's in the denominator, those will go away and the answer will be 64 minus 64 times 2 divided by 6. So if you compute that 64 minus 64 times 2 divided by 6, we can see what the answer comes out to be. 128 over 3, which if you turn to a decimal, is the 42.6667 answer that we knew was the exact answer. Okay, So here we have just shown that the integral, uh, what color should I use here? I don't know. We've shown that the integral from 0 to 4 of 6, uh, it's not going to work. Where do I write this? Oh, I can just write on another page. So what we have shown, so we have shown using Desmos, we've gotten an approximation for the definite integral. We've approximated the integral from 0 to 4 of 16 minus x squared dx, and we knew that we were somewhere in the ballpark of 42.6 to 42.7. We've also shown with our sigma notation, with the sigma notation problem, that, um, that this definite integral from 0 to 4 of f of x dx is a limit as n goes to infinity of, in this case we did a right endpoint problem, which turns out to be an underestimate. Okay. But as n went to infinity, we found that the exact answer was 42.6667, or not as a decimal, 128 divided by 3. So ends this video that brings section 5.1 all together into a single video.